Josh, Michael, thank you so much for the chance to chat. I really do appreciate it. Hi, thank you. No problem. Thank you uh, well, for chatting with us. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Honestly, it's Tenzin is a is a powerful film and so contemplative in so many ways. Um, it really, it really is something special. I was just wondering for you both where the film, where the film came from, where did the idea spring from? You go, Josh. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I think Michael and I were as friends and kind of people in music and film, uh, you know, had this history of connecting and talking about story and things, and a lot of the themes in it. That, are are the movie like mind and consciousness and these things those were things we cared about as friends uh and then I, I think i heard of this story about some um crime that was and and uh, things taking place in the tibetan community that were incongruous with what i knew of a lot of um tibetan buddhism and the vows towards passivity and peace that the diaspora of tibetans were known for and Tibet was known for. So this was an interesting idea. And Mike and I talked about film. I really wanted to make a film and Mike was a proper director and uh, you know, of, of music video and a film aspirant. And I would always wanted to make film. So that was a jump off. And then there was some, there was a connection between our interest in consciousness and, you know, my own, for me, like practice of Buddhism and these things. And then we went in and, looked into the story inside that community and that's the jump off. I think that's really cool. I, I love the fact that uh, this is a film that seems to be exploring uh, justice for Tibet. It's, it's, it's sort of uh, delving into Buddhist practices, psychology, and a lot of it is just is showing you as opposed to telling you I, I wanted to ask you about the film's tone because this may be one of the quietest films <laughs> I've ever seen, but it works. Um, I was wondering what, why was it that you decided to take such an approach? Oh, that's Mike. That's a Mike. I, Mike would, can I let Mike do that one? Um, some of my, uh, because I sort of designed with like, the help of Josh and uh, a lot of people along the way sort of like helped design the film. But in the end, I sort of like uh, had the job to do the actual sound design. And I just sort of, for me, I love films like that. Like actually I I've seen films that are a lot quieter than this film. Uh, and I love my favorite moments in films are when it's mostly when it's stripped down. And uh, I think my my instinct just goes in that direction, like when I was doing the sound edit. And, and um, <laughs> I mean, like the trailer that I did, I, I, try, I tried to go against that because I was just like, oh, I, the, the trailer needs to be like, ex, you know, like really exciting. But I mean, when, when thinking of the, the character and thinking of all the themes, uh, it made sense to me that it was like a silent um more silent than loud more like trying to win you over with uh forcing you it and sort of like pushing you to feel things and and rather than just uh Josh and I in the end we, we we tried various things like it was really loud it was a lot of music there was a lot of things going on uh and then it just we as we went, we just sort of like stripped away at it and every edit sort of got stronger and stronger by doing that. And uh, it came through lots of trial and error. And in the end, uh, Josh and I and all of our team and, and the producers and Brian and Julie and all of the Tibetans involved were very happy with the final result rather than earlier cuts. And, and, it, and it sort of came across like that. I would say, I mean, you know, like my favorite mo moments in movies, like like my favorite moment in a Tarkovsky movie is when it's silent and you just hear the intense, hyper-realistic sound of someone walking through the water where there is no room tone and there's no ambience and it's just these very specific... That to me is 
can you, you can tell you could say a lot um by doing that version and then there's that version where you have like music or you have you know lots of things that are like is it forcing you to feel a certain way and i feel like we we sort of felt like the visuals would do that do that job and we didn't need to do that in the sound so much yeah it was a fascinating approach because it, it you know one of the things that keeps coming up in the film is are you fully present and I think that silence demands that uh, in this film is demands you be sort of fully present in that moment, uh, whether it's visually or just as a viewer. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you about that actually, as you know, I, I, because this seems to be a recurring theme is this idea, are you really here or being fully present? I was wondering, do you think that our culture knows how to slow down long enough to be truly present is that something we've lost <laughs> josh i'll let you but josh don't go on too long about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i mean you know, I, josh I, could I talk know. five hours right this, now this is going to be good now now i know it's going to be good here we go <laughs> no i won't do it um i have a pension for like especially around that question that's like the that's the lead-in for my whole raison d'etre for life. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know that we can with the bombardment of stimulation in this world and the motivations and pushes towards se- like uh, concentration on self, selfhood and like individuality. It runs entirely counter to like the proposition that's like foundational to what we're in cultures that developed Buddhism, which were much more collective. And then it was like, that was easier. So can we do it in that way? I don't know. Um, I do know that like people's nervous systems are destroyed and uh, here because of the stimulation. So even getting to something like calm is pretty good, let alone what they call equipoise or places of like true stillness, which then you can really see mind. And that would be like where the real practices come in, like where mind is not just this vibrating disturbance of impressions that have happened through the day. It's like, can you get back to that stillness? quiet openness uh i'll just finish by saying your question was can we even do that i think like not it's gonna take you take all your effort to to get there so we're doing our best everyone's doing their best it's interesting because now there's an app for that Mm. it's like (laughs) uh, i i I was on my instagram or something and there's like calm Calm, my friend runs calm. calm. I know who made calm. That's 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 uh, I know her. Yeah, she made. I mean, she's doing her best. Yeah, something. Yeah, but that that's fascinating to me. That's because I mean, I think you're absolutely right. But it's su- it, it seems like such a. Uh, I forgive me. I'm losing my word here, but uh, juxtaposition, uh, poor juxtaposition to have an app to calm you down you know what i'm saying it's sort of like we got to stimulate ourselves to calm ourselves and i'm not judging the app i'm just saying this is where we're at yeah i find that so interesting it's i will say uh to, you know are you really here are you really here it's repeated the whole time like a lot throughout the film and and uh, that was like um that it played played two different parts and then now it plays three parts and only later did the part where you're speaking about did Josh and I sort of actually we had a conversation about it like just the it is not are you here are you present though it is because it turned into that because through like I said trial and error and through like trying different things we got to that and it made sense and we stripped away and then all of a sudden what you're talking about is are you truly present mm. which is very interesting because that is the entire the movie is somewhat has to do with only that mm. but then in a more real way it like like movie making way we were more saying are you alive i mean mm. are you are you dead have you have you gone have you accepted your death are, are you truly here that's what she's saying so there's like many ways you can look at that are you here and josh in the, originally it was are you physically in the room yeah. are you present and then you know so that came later actually mm-hmm. what 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 ended up being the the what you just said that came like literally like we just locked the cut and 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 i 
you know, Josh and I spoke about adding it in a couple of different spots. That was like so late in the game. Wow. Um, and it's it's so interesting. But that was its premise. That's its point. The whole point of the film was what you asked that question. I'm really happy you asked that question like that because uh, it wasn't intended initially to be that, but it turned in. The movie sh shape shifted it like a few times throughout the editing process. Uh, but anyhow, I love I love it. I'm happy you asked that question. Hey, Josh, isn't that cool? Yeah, I mean, that's all I'd like. I'm just glad that that's the that that the movie we that we made asks that and that you're asking it back. It's like that's nice. That's what we were getting at for sure. Well, one of the things I love is a film that asks questions that it doesn't have doesn't always answer. Um, and mm -hmm. this is one of those films, you know, this is, this is a film that actually, you know, if you invest in it, it invests in you back. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a number of questions that are brought up here. The idea of being truly free, um, this, that, that was a key one. I, for me that I thought, well, this is a really fascinating conversation that's going on. Um, which, you know what, I think, uh, Michael, I think it was you you mentioned about the Tibetans you had involved with the film. So I was wondering for the both of you, I mean, this is a, this is also very much a film about Tibetans living in, in, in can in Toronto. I think it's actually Toronto. Is it Toronto? That, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah. uh, you know, folk, but, but thinking of life at home, uh, at the same time, it's sort of torn between two worlds. So I was just wondering, you know, what, what that process was like to, to to focus in on that theme and and how you how you uh, arrived at that with the Tibetans that were involved. Let me just start that, Josh, and then I'll let you because uh, I, I just have a thought on that. Um, it's funny you you say are you the free line? Are you really free? You think you're so free? That was uh, we didn't write that. That was uh, this guy Yeshi who wrote that. Yeah. Um, he. You know, we had these themes. Josh had uh, made the original script, and there were. It's funny. I look back at the script. I do it a couple of times, and I, I've done it recently. I look back at the original script that was written, and then just seeing all of the words and seeing what was kept and what wasn't kept, and uh, that specific theme wasn't in our original script. Like, are you free? And and it was Yeshi because he was when we were speaking, Josh and I working with them about this scene, about this conflict, he brought that up um, in, in that conflict. So it was something that he wanted to speak about. So, and, and we say this, this script was written by many of the Tibetans. It's not just Josh and I, we say like in our credits, it's written by us and them, but it truly is because it's their experiences. And we didn't, know, we don't know we, there's no way for us to know their own personal, what they want to say, but we did go in and find what they all sort of wanted, what they thought was the most important thing to say. And we had a really amazing meeting around the table after they had finished reading the script that Josh and I had put together for them. And it was the first time they had read the words. And they were, they liked it and they were happy that we were making this film, but there were some things missing, some serious things missing for them. And, and, uh, they were fully collaborate. They collaborated with us quite closely on those missing. Uh, and I'll give you another example of uh, what was missing that we did not have in our script, which the entire speech that occurred in the uh, the protest, the the uprising day, March tenth, which was just March tenth. That entire speech was an idea that Josh and I had after looking at the first cut. We should put a speech in there. We should have a speech. Uh, but we didn't write the speech. That was it was a it was a collaboration between Yeshi and Chemi and uh, Sonam, uh, who actually m does those speeches. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we went in after and did ADR and we recorded and we edited. I edited the speech down just to and I sent it to Josh and then he edited it down. But it was off of their speech and we just put it into. And then we ADR'd a bunch of more words, but they didn't all fit into the to the walk. So we had to cut it down again. So it's like this pretty interesting collaboration between them and us throughout the process. But anyway, Josh, did you want to add to uh, that question, the original question? I don't even think I answered the question. I just sort of gave some, some things. No, I, I think you did. Um, it's a political movie and 
there's a term there's terms in Tibetan I think that are called rongza and rongzi which is like the two different perspectives on how to be free which is like martyrdom or don't do that like self-immolation is a martyrdom thing that can bring political change or it's a assault on let's say life and it shouldn't be done and those are like which way it goes towards freedom you know like are you working for worldly political freedom or do you have sort of the more bodhisattva buddhist kind of view of like oh again the sanctity of life like you wouldn't want to die this way because that, you know so that so there's conflict in the community and and we're not the ones to really talk about it but we did learn about that and so yeah yes she brought that idea and i think freedom's a big idea like personal freedom and then collective freedom and a lot there's lots of different perspectives it's not like a monolithic point of view in the community though there's there's cohesion about things and there's a lot of honor for people who self-immolate as martyrs but there's it's also tragic it's not simple so just that theme is huge, right? It's beyond what Mike and I could speak to, but we learned a lot. I, 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 you know what? I love what I'm hearing here too, because it almost sounds like the film is sort of its form of poetry. It's almost poetic in that it's sort of ebbing and flowing, evolving as it as it moves through, which many films do, but you can feel it in this one in, in, in the best of ways. Um, I know we're running out of time, so this is unfair for me to ask this question as my final question. I know that. <laughs> so feel free. I I I uh, I want Josh to to keep to not go off on a you know <laughs> as we said no. Um, I'm kidding, but I, I'm just want. There's a great line in this that talks about your mind and your demons are the same. I was just wondering how you feel about a statement like that or, or what that means to you. Mike, why don't I do like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, then you can do the rest so that I don't, you know what I mean? I'm kidding. Like, no, you take I, it I'm off. Totally kidding. I was totally kidding. Please forgive no, me. No, no, honestly, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's the idea that I think people who are into like spiritual things, the nature of reality and like what we're, is this all a projection, collective projection? Where does consciousness and energy and the foundational nature of like the cosmos, like, what is that? And so that's that's in that because it has to be. And when you talk about demons, it's like, well, the perspective you have when there's like they, they do this in Buddhism a lot. Like there's a there's someone thinks there's a snake on the ground and they go ah, and you have a reaction in your body. And then the light changes and you're like, oh, it's just a rope. So everything's perspective. So your demons are how you perceive things. And so I think that has to be known. It's not an, there's nothing's external. It's how we perceive it. And I think that is the same as what our character is going through is how he perceives his own death or life or what is he and where is he and that's the message sort of the big high message but mike what do you want to i that was pretty good no, right that that's was, it that was, that was great <laughs> <laughs> you, you did it all, all right. right honestly i'm uh, sorry uh michael were you gonna say something i didn't mean to cut you off there no i was not going to say anything <laughs> this is phenomenal honestly thank you to you both, Josh, Michael, thank you for your time. I appreciate so much your honesty, your openness, and and your willingness to to speak with me. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks. For yeah. Thanks. That was great. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.